So over the last year or so, I've released quite a few videos on how to uh, virtualize different types of Linux, whether it's Ubuntu or Kali or Mint or whatever the case may be. And, and those have been a lot of fun to make. Of course, there's always some inherent issues when you're virtualizing things, uh, especially with sharing USB devices and, and that sort of thing. So I wanna switch things up just a little bit and actually show how to, uh, in this case, install Kali Linux on a Chromebook. So the goal here is to actually completely remove Chrome OS from my Chromebook. I'm gonna be doing this on a, a, an Acer C720 with an Intel processor and a couple of gigs of RAM. Uh, it's also got a 16 gig hard drive in it or, or M.2 drive in it. According to Kali, you need a minimum of 20 to install. I was able to do it with 16, but your mileage may vary there. So uh, keep in mind that Kali, says that it needs 20, you may get by with 16. Just know that if you have an issue, that might be it. So without taking up any more of your time, let's go ahead and jump into the install process. Okay, so here we are on the desktop of the Chromebook. And the first thing we need to do here is actually put it in developer mode. And the way we do that is by pressing and holding escape and uh, refresh. We're gonna press and hold those while we tap the power button. We wanna make sure that we keep holding these buttons. Okay, so if you get this screen, the first thing you wanna do here is press Control D. It's gonna to say to turn verification off, press Enter. We wanna turn OS verification off to put it in developer mode. So we'll press Enter. And then here it's gonna give us a screen saying OS verification is off. Uh, press space to re-enable. This is kind of a, just an additional step to make sure that you wanna do this. And then I believe we'll have one more of these or something similar to this on the next screen. Okay, so now it's uh, in transition mode. Um, it's, it says up here at the top left, we'll start in 30 seconds. Again, this is another one of those, hey, just in case you didn't mean to do this, now is your chance to back out. Uh, and, and to do that, you just power your computer off. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna let this go. Um, and here in a few seconds, um, this text up at the top where it says starting in 30 seconds will change to an actual progress bar. Uh, we'll see the percentage, the time that it's been doing its thing, as well as over here, uh, how much time is left. And here is that progress bar, uh, like I stated before. Okay, so now that we've uh, we've put the de the device in developer mode, uh, we're presented with this screen saying OS verification is off. Um, and if we want to, we can uh, re-enable that. We don't want to do that. We actually want to go ahead and boot into uh, our desktop. So we can press Control D. Okay, so here we've got a couple of options. Um, we can go through the setup. Well, we'll have to go through a bit of the setup process here to get started though. So we'll go ahead and press Let's Go. And then it's going to ask us to connect to a, uh, a wireless uh, network. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, now we're just going to accept and continue. This is all fine. And this is where one of those variations comes in. Um, you can sign in, but I don't think that's necessary. Uh, what we'll do is actually browse as guest. And now we're logged in as a guest. Now the next thing we have to do is start the, sh the um, basically a command prompt and open shell. So we'll press Control Alt T. That's going to bring up Crosh, uh, which is the Chrome shell or the basically the Chrome terminal. Uh, we want to actually start shell and press Enter. So now we're here, and. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually um, modify the BIOS a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to type in a command here. And all of this will be in the description down below. Um, and then bash. And we'll say curl. And this is to download a file. TPS. JohnLewis.ie slash flash cb. Uh, fw.sh and then we'll press enter. So 
Now it's going to download a file um, and it's saying, hey, um, by doing this, you take on all of your own risks. Um, so we'll go ahead and press enter here. Now, here we actually want to use option one. This is going to uh, modify uh, Chromebook's RW legacy slot. Um, that's the, the, the step that we want to take here. So we'll press one and enter. And then it's going to go through a process. Um, and then it's going to ask us to type in um, the sentence here. Uh, this is a kind of a thing for them. Uh, so you can't accidentally or, or you can't ever say, well, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, this makes you type out an entire sentence uh, that reiterates, if I do this and it breaks, it's my fault. So now we can actually just go ahead, like it says here, and uh, shut off. So we'll go ahead and close this. We'll say leave. Oops. Right here. Power down. So we'll go ahead and power back up by pressing the power button. So here we're going to press Control D again to go back into our, our um, back into our operating system here. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to press Control Alt F2, um, which is going to be here, and possibly the forward button. We will be brought into uh, a login screen. Uh, what we're going to type in here is Chronos, and we'll hit Enter. Um, and basically that's going to be the the root basically and here we're going to uh, type in another command again all of this will be in the description down below and what this is going to allow us to do is actually boot from a usb device uh, that's the whole point of us doing this uh, boot legacy equals one and we'll say enter Cool, so now we're good there. And we'll say uh, sudo power off. And then that will shut down our Chromebook. Okay, so the next step is going to be uh, to insert the USB stick that we've created with Kali Linux on it. Uh, be sure to put the correct version of Kali on here for, uh, for whatever your Chromebook is, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in. Uh, we're gonna turn on our Chromebook now. And then on this screen, we're gonna go ahead and press Control L and then Escape. Um, and then here we're gonna give the, be given the option you know, where we wanna boot from. We're gonna say three. And here we can either boot from the, the live version or we can do an install. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the, just the graphical install uh, just to make things a little easier while we're going through this. So here it's saying invalid video number. Uh, so we'll go ahead and press enter. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with seven. Seven seems to be a good number there for the resolution that we've got. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. Cool, so now we're, we're taking straight into the install screen here. Um, as per usual, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna use uh, English, uh, again, United States. American English is fine for me. Looks like my uh, mouse pad isn't working at the moment, but that may change. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it some time to see uh, what happens here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and select um, the network uh, for wireless purposes. Okay, so host name, Kali is fine for my purposes. We'll go ahead and click continue. Um, we're not gonna give it a domain name, don't need one. Root password, um, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna give it password. Oops. Uh, again, I don't recommend doing it this way uh, if you're going to be using this in a live environment of any kind. And mountain time. And while this is doing its thing, let's see if I can plug in. Um, we're gonna 
go ahead and say use entire disk, that's fine uh, for this case because I've only got 16 gigs of hard drive space using the whole disk. I think I screwed that up. Yeah, I did. That's that's going to be root and then password. There we go. <clears throat> and of course, anytime you install a new operating system, usually the first boot uh, will take longer uh, than subsequent boots moving forward. Uh, so we'll just let this sit for a minute and uh, pop up the desktop just that quickly. So, and now now our trackpad works. Um, this is actually me using the trackpad uh, instead of the mouse over here. So that means that that started working. So that's really cool. Uh, here it's asking, uh, or it's giving us the option, oh, it connected uh, to our network. So that's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and um, pop open Firefox to make sure that we've actually got a good solid internet connection here. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let it load up. Of course, it's got all these great bookmarks in here uh, to learn how to use uh, Kali Linux. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that and we're gonna say, we'll go to fast.com. <clears throat> And uh, there we go. It looks like we're hitting about 120 here. Um, so not, not as fast as my network will go, keeping in mind that this device is five years old um, and it's got an older chipset in it. So uh, the fact that we're still hitting 120, I'm really, really happy with. Okay guys, so there you have it. A pretty easy process, all things considered. There were a couple of little hiccups like um, the trackpad not working uh, on the device immediately. Of course, that rectified itself once we got booted in, um, you know, and it started doing some, some hardware updates and stuff like that in the background. Uh, so that all went really, really well. So I was actually kind of surprised that this, that this worked, to be completely honest, uh, because it's only got uh, a 16 gig hard drive in it, um, but it did and I'm stoked. Um, hopefully uh, you'll have the same 
same results with yours that I had with mine. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments or any of that kind of stuff, uh, definitely leave those down in the comment section below. If you've got a different uh, version of Linux you'd like to see this done with, um, let me know. I'd be happy to make that video as well, uh, or at least try to make that video depending on, on stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd love to hear any of your questions, comments, ideas, any of that in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like videos like this and want to see me make more of them, of course, you can always hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, maybe the only way you'll get notified there. Um, but if the video was helpful, it'd be amazing if you'd hit the thumbs up button for me. It would help me out a bunch, might even help the algorithm uh, make my videos more popular. Uh, so I think really that's it. Uh, like I said, overall, very simple process. Uh, just mostly following the directions according to uh, the user interface there. Um, but yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. Thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.